In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create a 2D particle explosion with shape layers. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. No horrible jokes about my intro today, but uh, there are quite a few elements in this uh, explosion. And it might seem like there's a lot, but quite frankly, there's a lot of duplicating. And I want to show you guys how we can quickly, you know, create our own sort of awesome particle explosion. So, okay, so we have a comp with a background here. And the first thing I want to do is grab the ellipse tool here at the top. And we're going to start drawing out some circles. So let's go ahead and bring up our title safes. And you can do that by going down his little crosshair and click on title safes. And this allows us to see where the center is at. And we come here, click right in the center. And we click and hold down command and shift and we will draw out a perfect circle and that's control and shift on a PC and we just draw out like a circle like this and of course here at the top we can increase the stroke by a little bit and let's say let's let's say that's gonna be the size of our uh, you know circle so then let's go into the ellipse one here and uh, go into the transform properties and let's start animating this so let's add a keyframe for scale and let's bring the keyframe forward in time and then set the scale down to zero percent and this way we'll have our basic scale animation. And we can make both of these keyframes easy as keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And let's go into the stroke one in here. And one thing we'll do is we'll add a keyframe for the stroke width between like the scale keyframes. And then we'll go to the last scale keyframe here and set the stroke width to zero. And maybe we can select all these keyframes here and just offset it just by a little bit. So the animation is a little bit longer and we kind of just have that. So it kind of blows up and kind of implodes on itself. And we can make these last two stroke width keyframes, easy as keyframes as well. And so far we have the, our, you know, circle animation and it's pretty simple. And of course, maybe we can hit enter, return on our keyboard with the shape layer selected and we can call this one uh, ellipse. All right, and that is spelled correctly. Good job. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to make sure ellipse one is selected and we'll go up to edit, duplicate. And let's go ahead and open this up, go into transform properties and we can grab like the position here and kind of just offset the circle and maybe we'll go to the beginning and one thing we'll do is we'll go to the stroke width actually what we'll do is just hit U on our keyboard to bring up all the keyframes and then we'll go here to the stroke width and bring that down and then you know maybe we can take both these keyframes here or you know the scale property and the stroke width property and just offset these by a little bit so they come on at different times and another thing we can do is make sure that this circle is selected and go to the stroke here at the top and we can add like I say another color in here so we have like a secondary color and whatnot and boom, there's that. And then of course, let's continue to, you know, take this further. Let's continue to maybe like take a ellipse one here, duplicate it, bring it to the top. Hit you and your keyboard, bring up the keyframes. You know, we'll come here, offset them. And then let's go into the position for ellipse three here and just offset it in a nice little place. And then of course we can mess with the stroke width. So this way we can easily customize where our ellipses are going to be and you can continue to duplicate this if you want to add more detail. So now let's get some rectangles in there. Let's grab the rectangle tool and let's just come here, hold down shift and we can just draw out a rectangle like this. Maybe, you know, bring down the stroke a little bit so we can kind of keep it small. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay, and then we're going to go and open up the rectangle one, go into the transform properties in here and we'll say this is where we would like it to be positioned. You know, we can come here and just move it a little bit. And we can add a, you know, say, go to like right to maybe 21 frames or something, depending on how fast you want this to be. We'll add a keyframe for position um, and maybe also for scale and rotation. So this way, maybe we can have a little bit of rotation here, maybe set it to 13. And then let's go to the beginning here and, you know, let's bring the uh, position down maybe towards the center, but not exactly on the center. And of course, let's set the scale down to 0%. So this way we'll have it kind of grown out just like that. And that's pretty interesting. Of course, if we want, maybe we don't have to have the scale be completely consistent. Maybe it'll just blow up really fast and kind of move out of there. And I think that looks pretty interesting. And then maybe just offset the rotation by a touch. So then we have that rotation animation in there. And you know, that's pretty interesting. And then of course, let's go into the stroke and let's make sure we're at the last keyframes here and let's add a keyframe for the stroke width, bring that keyframe forward in time and set the stroke width down to zero. And now we have that square animation. And of course right here, let's go and select all of our uh, transform keyframes here and hit F9 to make them easy as keyframes. And then let's select the first stroke width keyframe and make that an easy as keyframe. And let's keep the last keyframe here, just a linear keyframe so it doesn't slow down or anything. It just you know, kind of goes out of the way. So. Uh, just pretty cool. And then let's go and make sure rectangle one is selected and let's duplicate it. 
And this time, let's just hit U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And maybe we'll select both of these position keyframes here and maybe just bring them down by a little bit, you know, maybe get it like right underneath there. And then, of course, maybe we'll bring down the, uh, go to the last scale keyframe and maybe we'll just make this a touch smaller. And we'll set the stroke color down to white or whatever color you would like. And, you know, right now we now have, you know, two rectangles like that. If you want, you can maybe offset the rotation and kind of mess with that. And then we can maybe, uh, you know, go back into the contents here and we can duplicate rectangle two. And we'll hit you on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And, you know, this is here, maybe we can select both of the, you know, keyframes over here. And we can put this in like in a random spot. It doesn't really matter. It kind of just like offset there. And then let's go to the first keyframe over here and then just kind of put this back in the middle. It's kind of like a little dot there, but you can kind of see what's going on. And this way we'll kind of have like a square kind of off in the side there. And of course, maybe we select, you know, each of these, uh, you know, the keyframes for the squares over here and just offset them in time by a little bit just so it's not completely, you know, consistent and perfect. And, you know, that's pretty interesting. And of course, you can go and add as many squares as you want. And let's come here and just rename this to square, the layer to square. Okay, so I've added like another square in there. And let's go and grab the uh, polygon tool. And we'll just come here, draw out, you know, hold down shift, and we'll kind of draw out a nice little perfect polygon like that. And then let's go into the polystar settings here, go on the polar star path, and let's set the points down to three. So now we have a triangle, pretty awesome. And maybe one thing we can do is hit you and our keyboard for the square layer here, and we'll see our transform properties. Just select any of the keyframes under the transform properties. Just skip the stroke width, copy these transform uh, you know, keyframes, and let's go into the transform for polystar and just make sure that's selected and just paste those keyframes in there. And then of course you can offset them a little bit, put it wherever you want. So now we kind of have the base animation of our triangle. We just have to, you know, reposition it and maybe mess with some of the parameters. Okay, and then let's go to like the last keyframe here and let's just, you know, position this triangle to, you know, wherever you want to end up and then go to the first keyframe here and then just use the X, Y coordinates to kind of put this in the, you know, spot where we want to start off. And, you know, that's pretty decent. And then maybe we can maybe just increase the rotation to be facing maybe towards the edge there and, you know, kind of have that interesting, you know, animation there. And then, of course, just like before, you know, we need to go into the stroke settings and add a keyframe for stroke width. Make sure to uh, go to the last keyframe here for all of our transform properties and set this to zero. And we'll make the first keyframe an easy as keyframe by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And then, you know, as always, we can go through here, you know, duplicate the polystar. And, you know, we can offset this, but these keyframes by a touch, you know, if we can come here, you know, change the color of the stroke. And then, you know, mess with the position to kind of have that nice slight offset by a little bit. I and mean, if we want to keep it grouped together, just kind of go in there and offset them by a touch. And then let's offset all the keyframes here. And boom, there we have another triangle. And if you don't like another triangle, and if you feel like that the animation kind of stops when it decides to you know, fade away, what you could do is take like the stroke width and move these keyframes forward in time just by a few frames. And that will kind of help adjust any issues there. If you don't like it, how it kind of stops abruptly. This way it'll just kind of fade out before you know it starts to slow down. So, and then, you know, of course, that's how you can do that triangle animation. And of course, you can always add more triangles or whatever to that. And then for the last one, let's just grab the star tool. And this one's it's all basically the same. You know, grab the star tool, you know, set the stroke to whatever color you want. And then we'll go back into the actual transform keyframes here, copy them, maybe minus the stroke width, and you know, we'll paste them right into the you know, transform properties, you know, and put them in a place where we want. Maybe this time we'll up the scale a little bit more. And then, of course, position it and maybe we can start duplicating it and do some awesome things. And then, of course, go back in the stroke, add the stroke width, keyframe, and go to the end of our animation and set it down to zero. Then after a little bit more design with your stars and other shapes, you can have this entire explosion like this. And if you want to make this even more interesting, so it's just not completely 2D, let's go to say it's the ellipse here. And let's go to effect perspective and let's add the drop shadow effect. Let's go and increase the distance. So we have some separation there. We can lower the opacity or increase it depending on what you like. And maybe I'll set it down to like 20% and maybe increase the softness by a touch, maybe just like by a few points there. And that way we'll have some of that animation there. And then we can copy the drop shadow and paste it to the three other layers. 
and boom, there we have that entire you know awesome animation. Maybe we should have uh, lowered the opacity by a little bit more. And then we'll just copy and we'll put that back in there. And then of course, make sure the ellipse is selected and go up to effect perspective and let's add the bevel alpha effect. And this will kind of give it like that three dimensional look, a little bit unique. Uh, of course, maybe we can increase the edge thickness by a touch and then maybe we can just copy the bevel alpha and paste it into the three other layers. Maybe we'll go into the triangles and lower the edge thickness by a little bit. And also maybe the stars, we'll lower the edge thickness a little bit as well. And I think the squares are okay. And this way we'll have like that nice little three dimensional look and you can always mess with that. So that's how you can create some very interesting particle explosions with uh, shape layers. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more After Effects tutorials just like this. And, you know, please visit me on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.